Okay, so let us all uh, sit in the presence of God with a prayerful attitude and, uh, you know, um, usually the people are asking to the pastors, pastors, why you are preaching always? You know, every meeting, in every meeting, every gathering, there is a preaching, there is a message and why uh, you people are always preaching, 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 you know, um, can you just skip one message maybe in one program, you know? That pastor asked to that person that, uh, uh, brother, do you remember what I preached the last week? Then he said, no. Then pastor said, that's the reason that we are preaching every time. Because we know everything and we have everything in the Bible. But the thing is, there is somebody to remind the things which is already mentioned in the Bible, right? Somebody to remind the 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 portions that uh, uh, for the people because our memory level is very low right our memory huh? no <laughs> okay our memory level is very low and uh, we can't remember all the things always and uh, you know there are 66 books in the bible and um, uh, we are not remembering all the verses or all the main important por portions or something like that but we know something that when somebody is there to to uh, support us and when somebody is there to encourage us or when there is somebody to uh, preach the verses or the or the portions of the Bible in different times and uh, that will remind us about the already written uh, portions of the Bible. Okay, so that's the reason that we are always, uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, preaching the word of God in all our gatherings and all our meetings. I mean, so let us be reminded about the the, the word of God. And uh, we know that today's message is going to be the, the first Sunday sermon of 2023. 20, uh, okay. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is the first Sunday for the 2023 because the last Sunday we didn't had a, a service and, uh, and as this is the gathering, the first gathering. Um, so, and we know that uh, uh, we are already stepped into the, into the new year 2023 and uh, we are in this new year and um, we have to know many things about the plan of God about our, I mean, uh, about our life in, the, in, the, in this new year. So that's the reason uh, I was uh, planning to talk about uh, this theme, and this is the theme that we are going to, um, I mean, uh, discuss about this morning: the downing of a new year. What is that in Hindi? Nayasalki Shuruat. Okay. So, Pudiya Urvashatinde Arambam. The new year. When the new year is, I mean, coming. So we usually we are taking some decisions in on on 31st okay 31st night meeting we take some uh, usually we take some uh, decision that okay i will be doing this and i'll be uh, doing that all those things okay but uh, uh, but when we come to the for the next year also again we are thinking okay oh i could not do all those things because i took took the decision that's true but i could not do that and i could not complete that uh, uh, promise that which i made uh, uh, to the lord okay so anyway you know, uh, we have something to 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 get from the the word of God, and always God is speaking to the people uh, to to let them know that what is the plan of God about our personal life. I mean, so each and every person we are supposed to be fruitful in the hands of God. See that uh, John Angle is sitting at the front now. See John Angle written on the the other one, Badan Siddhi ki another trim. I mean, in the this world, there are many people who are talking about Badan ki tanya tagra. Okay, praise the Lord. And so we are receiving from the word of God, receiving from God the word of God, which uh, I mean God has to speak to us uh, to about the about the plan of God about each person. I mean, so that's the reason I was uh, thinking that we need to know what is the plan of God and what I mean we uh, how God is going to use us in this uh, in this new year. I mean, so let us uh, uh, go to that uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, I see chapter 60 uh, verse 1 uh, Isaiah book of Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 uh, somebody can read that maybe you can use mic also if somebody is reading you can mic arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you okay so the sub is going to be this being motivated to shine for the Lord in the dawning of a new year so we will be connecting that Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 maybe 2 and also uh, 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 Isaiah chapter 61 
verse 2 also. Okay, read that verse also, uh, Elsa, uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 2. Okay, okay. Yeah, chapter 60, verse 1, it says, Rise and shine, for a light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. But in 61, verse 2, we are reading, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Okay, so when we got to this portion, we know that, you know, it is not good and it is uh, not right to um, uh, interpret or, uh, you know, theologically or hermeneutically, it is not right to um, interpret the prophetical word uh, uh, into into a into a, a, a spiritual meaning. You know, sometimes we, um, the, the pastors are uh, translating or interpreting the Old Testament portions uh, 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 for, for the New Testament people and they are saying that, okay, this is the meaning of this. Okay, so sometimes it is not uh, a good to uh, translate or interpret the things in the Old Testament as it is the, in, a, in a literal meaning in the New Testament because every portion of the Bible and every, you know, when we were studying uh, the, the theology in the theological college, uh, there, is a, there is a subject called hermeneutics and there is a, a subject called the theology also. So uh, the, the teachers are saying, so whenever you are interpreting or whenever you are preaching, uh, you should not take all the verses from the Old Testament and, uh, and I mean, interpret it in a, in a literal meaning of or spiritual meaning of that uh, in the New Testament. Because you know, especially in the in the Old Testament prophetical books, we will see that there are many things which is already fulfilled, and there are many things which is going to be fulfilled. Okay, so all the prophecies in the Old Testament are not fulfilled, but there are many prophecies which is going to be fulfilled in the future also. Okay, so at the same time, there is nothing wrong if you are taking some of the verses and uh, just translating or interpreting that verse and uh, giving the spiritual meaning of that verse in the New Testament period also, if that, that doesn't make any, any, any difference or the, if that, uh, I mean, uh, uh, doesn't contradict with the, the, the Old Testament context, okay? Because every portion, every event which had happened in the Old Testament and everything which is written in the Old Testament, each verses and each portions and each passages has its own meaning. I mean, so when we are translating that and when we interpret that, sometimes there are, I mean, errors are happening. There are some things happening. You know, we are not supposed to take all the things and all the, I mean, points which is written in the Old Testament and translate or interpret into in the New Testament as a, as a spiritual meaning. There are many things. But when you look this verse, okay, in this particular verse, especially, I mean, verse, uh, I mean, one of chapter 60, it says that, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Hallelujah. And we understand, this is a wake-up call for people of Israel, people of Israel, or Jerusalem. You know, in, uh, in 60 verse 1, it says that, Okay, and uh, there are somebody said uh, that okay, this is uh, this uh, 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 commandment or this warning is given to 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 people of Israel or, or the people of Jerusalem. Mm? It's not for the New Testament people, but very clearly we can understand that you know this prophecy. This is a this is a prophetical book. Isaiah is a prophetical book, and it says that rise and shine, rise and shine, and you can take that also in our life and in our church. I mean today, and we can also accept that. I mean command or uh, that. Uh, I mean uh, warning or that. Uh, I mean promise that you, when you are rising in the presence of God, and when you are ready to shine for the Lord, I mean our God is able to use you, and uh, He will help you, and He will illuminate and enlighten, enlighten. Uh, I mean your presence and uh, your, your 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 power. Hallelujah. And 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 today we understand that. You know, when even though that uh, uh, this Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah was uh, uh, prophesying this prophecy, maybe uh, 2000, uh, around 2700 years ago. Uh, even 2700 years ago, even though this prophet Isaiah was speaking this and prophetical word to the people of Israel, today for the ELC people, the members of our church, I mean, so we can also receive that word and let us say that, okay, the Lord is telling me, rise and shine. Hallelujah. And when prophet Isaiah was saying to those people in those days, they were in a different, different situation. 
and they were in the, in a darkness i mean period and they were not having the light of god and they were not uh, able to receive the light of god in their lives but god said that okay you are going to be shining for for for, for the lord i mean so the people of israel if you are ready to i mean rise up and if you are ready to rise i mean for the lord and god is there to i mean continue you and the lord is able to i mean use you for the glory of the name of the lord hallelujah we understand when the people of israel they were in captivity in different places in egypt and babylon in different places god was telling them that god wanted to use you in that area Amen. So God was placing those people, the people of Israel, in different captivity, in different places, in uh, in uh, among the Gentile people, and God was saying them, yeah, God wanted to use you in this particular place. That's the reason that God is taking you there. Amen. But most of the time, what happened? Those people, the people of Israel, they were not ready to rise up, and they were not ready to shine for the Lord, and they were not ready to, I mean, uh, uh, propagate the, the, the good news of uh, the Bible to those people. Even though the people of Israel were known as the people of God, right? They were known as the people of God, but they were not, I mean, uh, uh, expressing, I mean, what is, the, what is our God, and the God Almighty God, and they were not expressing their experiences that God has done for them. Hallelujah. So this morning, to the, to the people those who are sitting here, let me tell you one thing, that we have a special task to do in this 2023. Hallelujah. In this two new year, when God is able to anoint us and he is able to strengthen us. Hallelujah. And if we are ready to arise for the Lord and God is able to make us shine for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, you can see that uh, particularly this, I mean, chapter 60 and chapter 61. Okay. So there is a, there is a close connection between this chapter 60 verse 1 and chapter 61 verse 2. Okay. That portion, you, you will understand that, you know, this partial fulfillment of these chapters are already done. Already done. And now the fulfillment, fulfillment is continuing now. Okay, because you know, it all, already says the rise and shine for your light has already come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Already the light has come. Who is that light? Jesus is the light. Okay, and Bible very clearly says that Jesus is the light of this world. And then Jesus said, you are the light of this. Hallelujah. Already light to one when did Jesus come? When did Jesus come? Huh? Okay. With the, you know, we, we know that the history was divided into two. AD and BC. During the time of Jesus. The coming of Jesus Christ. Right? Okay. So, AD first. So, Jesus came. And the light came. And even before that also the light was there. Right? Right? Huh? Jesus was there in heaven and he came and took the birth as a human being into this world and the light has come at the same time in chapter 61 verse 2 it says that to proclaim why Jesus did come to this world because he had the anointing he had the anointing Jesus had the anointing what is that? Hmm? To proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all the people, those who are mourning in the presence of God. Hallelujah. So we understand the fulfillment of the light is come, the, the, the prophetical word light has come, is already fulfilled partially. And now the fulfillment of that prophetical word is continuing through you and me. Then now. The, the Lord has I mean, I mean, come upon us and when we received Jesus as a personal savior, you and me became a light of this world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You and me are the light of this world and now the fulfillment also is continuing through the church of God. Through the church of God. Through the believer. Every believer we are supposed to we are supposed to Show the light to this world. Because we are called by God as the light of this world. Hallelujah. And again, the same prophetical word is going to be fulfilled during the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. And again, the complete fulfillment of the prophetical word is going to be happened during the 
time of the millennial kingdom we are reading in the revelation i mean that uh, i mean there is no need of light in the kingdom of god because jesus himself will be the light hallelujah praise the lord we understand that this prophecy is going to be fulfilled during the time of the millennial kingdom thousand years and after that also in the eternity there is no need of sun there is no need of moon because jesus himself will be the light of the people alle i mean yesu christu thanne aara irikkum നമ്മുടെ വെളിച്ചമായിരിക്കും എവിടെയാണ് കർത്താവിന്റെ രാജ്യത്തിൽ നമ്മുടെ കർത്താവ് ആരായിരിക്കും ഒരു വെളിച്ചമായിരിക്കും നമ്മൾ ഇവിടുന്ന് വിളക്കുന്ന കൊണ്ടുപോകേണ്ട ആവശ്യം ഇല്ല ഇവിടുന്ന് തീപ്പെട്ടി കൊണ്ടുപോകേണ്ട ആവശ്യം ഇല്ല ആമേൻ ഇവിടുന്ന് ലൈറ്റ് കൊണ്ടുപോകേണ്ട ആവശ്യമില്ല ബൾബ് കൊണ്ടുപോകേണ്ട ആവശ്യമില്ല ആമേൻ ഹാലു കർത്താവിന്റെ രാജ്യത്തിൽ എന്തായിരിക്കും യേശു ക്രിസ്തു തന്നെ എന്തായിരിക്കും ഒരു വെളിച്ചമായിരിക്കും ഹാലുവിയാസ്പോൺസിബിലിറ്റി ഇസ് ടു റിസീവ് ദറ്റ് ലൈറ്റ് and show to the worldly people show to the society hallelujah you know when you read about uh, i mean uh, i say chapter 61 verse 2 you understand there are many things okay we, we, maybe uh, uh, we will go to maybe luke chapter 4 verse 16 uh, to 21 luke chapter 4 uh, verse 16 to 21 uh, the next one the next slide he went to nazareth where he had been brought up and on the sabbath day he went into the synagogue as was his, his custom he stood up to read and the and the scroll of the prophet isaiah was handed to him and rolling it he found the place where it is written mm. the spirit of the lord is on me mm. because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor mm. he has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free okay so you know jesus also was quoting that same thing the quoting that uh, i mean prophetic uh, prophetical word from uh, isaiah chapter 60 uh, 61 verse 2 it says about jesus and he is talking to the to the to the uh, synagogue in, into the people those who were in the in the synagogue of nazareth and we read there where he had been brought up and he was standing there and as he was uh, as his custom he entered the synagogue on the sabbath and stood up to read and the book of the prophet isaiah was handed to him you know while jesus was standing in the synagogue the book of the the prophetical book of the isaiah was given to him and then he opened the book and he found the place where it is written yesu christuvine kurichu thanne padaye niyamathil ezhuthi vechirikkina vakyam yesu christu endu edu pick up edittu adu avada kaanikkana okay and he said that and this is talking about me that i came to this and i am the light of this world hallelujah and he said the spirit of the lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor people you know we understand jesus was anointed by the father god to preach the gospel to the so, so somewhere it is written the good tidings good tidings okay good news like i did it so and that endru vedi ana kartavane i mean pidava devam abhishekam cheyathe and the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor people you know when you go to james uh, i think uh, in james chapter 2 verses 5 and 6 we are reading there that you know when um, um, i mean uh, the 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 the, the uh, epistle writer uh, james was talking to the people and he was saying something that, like uh, you know the good news when it is coming to the poor people the afflicted people they will easily receive that can you read that please maybe uh, james chapter 2 verses 5 and 6 yeah ah daridran madrode suvishesham arikkan enne aichirikkunu adu luke luke suvishesathile na james le paranjirikkunna karyam undu yeah book of james chapter 2 verses 5 and 6 yeah you know the bible and the epistle writers always they were i mean considering the poor people poor means maybe 
may be in, in any in any area okay it may be a poor in heart or poor in uh, the economy or in wealth or some, something like that you know that the people those are afflicted okay in some translation it is written uh, you know uh, uh, to preach the gospel to the afflicted people that means there were many people even the people of israel also were sometimes afflicted with uh, the the enemies Hmm? and uh, uh, you know we have to understand you know the, uh, this is a this is a interesting thing that you understand that whenever the the, the poor people are receiving uh, whenever the people uh, the poor people or the afflicted people are uh, listening the word of god they are always ready and easily they will accept the word okay but the rich people they will think twice right the rich people will think twice and uh, the, the the famous people will think uh, twice and uh, the educated people will think twice and uh, then only they will receive jesus as their personal savior but the poor people the afflicted people when it says that uh, jesus was anointed and jesus was anointed you know uh, the reason that i'm uh, telling you about uh, the anointing of jesus that uh, the same anointing is upon you and me that's the reason I'm telling you this morning and uh, as uh, we are entered into the I mean, new year, I mean, I mean, again, I mean, this morning also God wanted to anoint every person, every member of our church, hallelujah, to be anointed, to preach the gospel to the poor people. Hallelujah. And uh, I mean, Jesus said, I mean, I am anointed to preach the gospel to the poor people and also to heal the broken people, broken hearted, to heal the broken hearted. Ah. To preach deliverance to the captives, the people those who were kept in captives, and the people those who were struggling by the enemies. You know, when they receive the good news, they are getting the deliverance. They are getting the deliverance. Hallelujah! And to to recover the sight of the blind, the blind people. Okay, and spiritually and physically, if they are blind, I mean, we we, we know that when Jesus was uh, uh, on his public ministry. Eh? When Jesus was on his public ministry, whenever he was going, and there were many blind people, and they were asking, Oh, oh, son of David, son of David. Who is the example for that? Bartimai, yes. Eh? Bartimai, right? Bartimai. Okay, so, crying, Oh, son of David, son of David, heal me. See me. Okay, and Jesus stood there, and he went there and healed him. Right? You know, whenever Jesus was walking, the rod the people the afflicted people the captives and uh, the the struggling people the blind people the the leprosy people all were crying unto jesus christ and he was healing all those people that's the reason that jesus said already i am anointed i am anointed to preach the deliverance to the captives and to recover the sight of the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised Okay, and then Bruce and Warren and the Malati Parnirikine Udanya Hallelujah. So that anointing was upon Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And also to proclaim the year of Lord's favor. To proclaim the year of Lord's favor. So when God was anointing, God, when, when Father God was anointing, I mean, Jesus Christ, he was having that authority and he was having that anointing and he is telling that, okay, I am ready to impart the same anointing, the same authority to the people of God, those who are sitting in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we receive that this morning? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I mean, who wanted to receive that anointing and that power and that authority. I mean, to preach the gospel to the unreached people. To preach the gospel to the poor people. Hallelujah. 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 This morning, let us receive that anointing from the Lord. And God is saying that again. I mean, Jesus is saying, I am anointed. I am anointed to do all these things. And you are also anointed for that. Because you receive Jesus as your personal savior. And you are the light of this world. Hallelujah. You know, when you go to those things uh, that uh, when we are reading uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 60, uh, 60 and 61, we are understanding that Jesus was having an office of prophet. Hmm? Jesus was having an office of? When you go through these points also, you will understand Jesus was having an office of prophet. Okay, a pro prophecy, and also he was a priestly man, and he was the high priest. Jesus was a high priest, and also he was having a kingly office. Okay, so when Jesus is having 
ദ കിംഗ്ലി ഓഫീസ് യേശുവാരായിരുന്നു രാജാവാണ് പ്രവാചകനാണ് പുരോഹിതനാണ് ഈ ശുശ്രൂഷകളൊക്കെ കർത്താവ് ഈ ഭൂമി വന്നപ്പോൾ ചെയ്തു ഹലലുയ ആൻഡ് ഹി ഡൈറ്റ് ഫോർ എസ് റൈറ്റ് he died for us and he was standing in between the human being and the heavenly father hallelujah yesu kartava ee logathile manushyarkum pidavai daivathinu vidil oru madhyasthanai hallelujah hallelujah amen as an intermediate what is that interceding he was interceding in between the human being and the father god hallelujah and that's the reason he says that okay i'm having the prophetical prophetical ministry and i'm having the i mean kingly ministry and i'm having the priestly ministry and i am giving you that in second i mean uh, uh, second peter we are reading the same thing that we are all called by god from the darkness we are all called by the uh, by god from the darkness to proclaim the gospel and god made us as his own people royal people priestly people and we are the i mean we are the people of god and we are the priests and kings and royal people hallelujah many times you know the believers are not able to understand who they are huh? they are not understanding who they are they do not know who they are I mean, remember one thing I mean god has anointed you with the power of god god has anointed you with the gospel of jesus christ and you and me are i mean are i mean willing if we are willing to shine for the lord there is a god and he is able to encourage us and he is able to strengthen us hallelujah and when we talk about this particular thing the favorable year see the last one to proclaim the year of the lord's favor okay the same thing is written in book of leviticus also okay in in some some of the translation it is uh, the favor the lord's favorable fav uh, uh, lord's favor the uh, what is a favorable day okay in some other translation uh, different uh, translations are there like uh, the the jubilee the year of jubilee right the year of jubilee okay we will go to leviticus chapter 25 verse 10 ah. it shall be a jubilee year for you okay so when we got to the background of that particular verse okay endana avarodu parnjirikkunn endo malayalathil parnjirikkunne ningalkku endha irikkum adu yovel samalsaram aayirikkum nu ornja etra varsha jubilee etra varsha 50 years Okay. the jubilee we are celebrating the jubilee 50 years okay and there are some people those who are going to celebrate their 50th birthday okay you know we know that the 50th day you know why they are saying that why they are saying that okay in the in the in the in, in jerusalem the people of israel when they were having that celebration when they were having the celebration you know the background of this is every 7 years jews were to observe a sabbatical year okay jews were i mean yeah it is there okay so every seven year the jews jewish people were i mean supposed to uh, celebrate or observe the sabbatical year and every seven years jews were to observe a sabbatical year also and after seven sabbatical year or 49 years they were to celebrate the 50th year as the year of silver jubilee okay so the 50th year will be the silver jubilee the silver jubilee celebration why god has given for them that something is going to happen in that year particular year something is going to happen in that particular year you will see that in in, in all those portions that the, the things that uh, which is happening in that uh, i mean time or the 50th year i mean what is happening with the people of israel when it is written you know all debts were cancelled all debts were cancelled then lands were returned to the original owners slaves were freed from the slavery all were given a fresh and new beginning and this was the lord's plan to balance the economy and keeping the rich from exploiting the poor people listen you know when god was asking them to do or asking them to celebrate the 50th year after the seven sabbatical years or sabbatical i mean years I mean uh, I mean so 50th year something is going to happen for you the deliverance is going to happen for you the liberty the freedom is going to happen in your life for the people of Israel hallelujah and the same thing that we understand that as we are the children of God we are the believers I mean spiritually now we are in the year of jubilee because we are the people already delivered from the bondages of sin we can say one hallelujah for that 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who we are. We are not happy when we are saying that we are the children of God. We are the delivered people. Hallelujah. We are spiritually in the year of Jubilee. In the year of Jubilee. Because we are celebrating God's presence and we are celebrating God's promises and God's presence and God's blessings upon every one of us. Hallelujah. Our debts are gone. You know, those days, what happened? All debts were cancelled. No, we are no, not debt to the flesh. We are not debt to the uh, 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 Satan. Now, we are not debt to the, the world, right? We are not debt to the world. We are not Hallelujah. We are not debt to the world. I mean, that the same thing that we were uh, uh, studying from the book of Romans on Friday, right? You know, we are not debtors to this world now. We are not debtors to this Satan or sin or a slavery to any of these things. But we are delivered people. We have the freedom and we got the delivered. I mean, we got the liberty through the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And that's the reason now at present we are in that freedom. And we are enjoying that free, spiritual freedom. Because we are living in a favorable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. And also we are already living in the favorable year. We are also anointed by the Lord. We are also anointed by the Lord. And we have a separate life. And we have a separate task to propagate the gospel towards the other people. But it's the first thing that we can understand from the, I mean, uh, Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1. It says that, arise and shine. Arise and shine. Because we are already received Jesus the light. Yeah? So the second, I mean, portion we'll be discussing maybe in the next, uh, I mean, Sunday. And this, the, the first thing that we would like to, I mean, uh, listen, it was, I mean, we are supposed to arise and shine. Who are supposed to arise and shine? The people, those who are delivered from the bondages and slavery of sin, Satan and the world. Hallelujah. And we have the power. The light is upon us. Hallelujah. Already the light is upon us because in chapter 61 verse 2 it says that when Jesus Christ was already anointed by God to do all these things and you and me are also have the anointing. Hallelujah. Close your eyes and just Pray for one minute and, and, and surrender your life in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, I mean think about that verse uh, which came to us. Hallelujah. It, uh, I mean, very clearly that uh, it says that let us also arise and shine for the Lord. I mean, has, I mean, come upon us. For the light has come upon us. Hallelujah. And we have the light of God. And we are supposed to propagate the gospel towards the people of God. So let us all, let us all surrender our life in the presence of God. And let us pray. Hallelujah. I mean, I would request that. Uh, John Uncle uh, to lead us in prayer now. John